Due to COVID-19, New York State faces huge funding shortages. Without federal relief or new revenue, lawmakers may cut some state funding streams by 20%. This includes behavioral health care. Families together in New York State set out to talk to parents and youth to share their experience and show how crucial their behavioral health has become. These are their voices. My name is Casey Hayner, and I'm Tori. this is Tori. We're from Mechanicsville, New York, um, and Tori has autism as well as Cornelia DeLang syndrome, um, a genetic syndrome. It um, was a drastic change um, immediately, which you know, with um, children in general, but children with autism, it's very hard to just take that away with no transition. And um, it took a good two months to get to a place where we could have struck, you know, he was following the structure here and it was helping him, but um, he definitely it affected his mental health as well as mine um, because we were confined in the house. We didn't leave the house for over two months, um, extended school year, um, being virtual, um, rather than getting to go to the program he's been going to for years. So, um, but we made it through um, and um, it's gonna get better. No, I don't think in comparison that the, the money that the funding for these resources were where it's supposed to be. These are very essential services that, um, you know, help tons of children, but families as well. And, and, and you know, it saves money in the long run if you can keep um, somebody at home with their services rather than putting them in, let's say, residential care or a day program or so if, if you know, more people realize how much these services are needed, um, like respite, stuff like that. Um, I've been on a waiting list for a respite worker for seven years, you know, and we're just in an area where there isn't workers. So the service providers are not getting paid nearly enough. <laughs> and um, our family was able to get um, services, mental health, addiction services, myself, I was, I'm in recovery. Um, and I just celebrated three years clean. Um, and I am able to get services, but I need to go out of my county to get them. Twenty percent cut is going to hurt us because, like I said previously, we don't get the funding we need as it is. So, um, in comparison to other um, things going on in the state, they get that other you know, um, places get more money. And this is truly investing in your communities. And when people say we need to invest in our communities, this is what they mean. Um, we need social workers and mental health to be able to come into the home. We need, you know, a respite for our children and um, adults with disabilities, just not only for the families, but for them. And, you know, we really need these services to keep our community as a whole. People like, you know, our family with Tori, who needs, you know, what he gets, you know, he gets has a behavior specialist and um, she has helped him so much. He, you know, gets some at home respite and that helps me so much. Um, but there's so much more than that as well. Mm -hmm. Across the board, so many community services that are essential and, um, you know, it will affect not just us, but other areas um, greatly affect, you know, and it will really hurt the people who need these services the most, who need that money the most. They need to find other revenue. Um, you know, there's billionaires are profiting off of this epidemic. Um, it's pandemic, they're, they're profiting off of it and they're getting richer from this and it's vital for them to listen to our voices and the you know really how it's impacting the people because they're there to represent us you know that's why we put them in office